It's time for Thriller Thursdays here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The Hawk Chronicles follow the adventures of Detective Kate Hawk, who went from a Baltimore police detective to intergalactic investigator, from fighting crime on the streets to crime in the stars. In the last episode of The Hawk Chronicles. All I know is that some Chinese guy working for a computer security company is missing. Only a laser could penetrate a body, travel that distance, and leave a residue. Yeah, so what's with that armed escort? Did the law finally catch up to you? You might want to come with us. This involves someone you know. Rick, what are you doing here? Why don't you turn off your translator and talk to me? Gleason in our native tongue. What? You are hereby charged with Article 401 of the Uniform Code of Federation Justice, aiding and abetting the enemy. My master, the prisoner is ours now. He has been secured in the laboratory suite. Looks like the monkey. He's off our backs. The feds are picking up the case. We have an opportunity here that we need to take advantage of. Your old unit is investigating this. I'm sure that you can work with them without drawing a lot of attention. I trust you are more comfortable here than at the prison number 310. We'll secure peace throughout the galaxy. Peace that only you can provide. And now, episode 58, Collision Course. Good afternoon, may I help you? Yes, Agent Kate Hawk, Homeland Security. I have an appointment with Mr. Clements. Yes, one moment, please. Mr. Clements, Agent Hawk is here to see you. Yes, sir. Mr. Clements will be right out. He can wait right over there. Thank you. Uh, do you keep a detailed record of who comes and goes here? Yes. The security desk at the entrance logs all visitors, and I log any visitors on this floor. And given your business, I can assume you maintain video surveillance? Both at the entrance and on this floor, and at the selected exterior locations. Thank you very much. Agent Hawk? Yes. Ted Clements. Mr. Clements, thanks for meeting me on such short notice. Not a problem, Agent. Please, let's step into the conference room here. So, are you new at the agency? Yes, I recently transferred from the Baltimore Police Department. Well, they must have seen something in you to make that transfer. I think a lot of it had to do with my familiarity with Chinese culture. They needed someone in that field, and I met all the criteria. Here we go, have a seat. I'm sure that you have many qualifications to get an invite from Homeland Security, and since you specialize in Chinese culture, can I assume that you're here about Professor Lin? Yes, I am. Mr. Clements, I need to know exactly what the professor was working on. Agent Hawk, it was your people who requested us to work with Professor Lin. <laughs> well, you know how the right hand never tells the left hand what it's doing. All I know is the two major federal agencies were hacked last year, and someone blamed the Chinese. <laughs> you mean someone stuck their foot in their mouth. The Chinese were furious that we, or, or should I say someone, blamed them for the security breach. We were asked to recommend the best expert in the field of decryption. You mean hacking. You needed the best black hatter in the business. Lin Xiang. And Homeland Security, the NSA, and CIA all agreed to let him have access to all our sensitive information. Help us, yes. Access, uh, no. Our best encryption specialists... Hackers. Encryption and security specialists. To find the back door used to gather information on thousands of the federal government's employees. So, did he find it? Possibly. Mr. Clements, you know Professor Lin has been missing for two days, under suspicious circumstances, right? Missing? No, I... I... A Chinese communist professor who specializes in hacking, works with your best hackers, gathers intel, and then doesn't show up for two days. And all you can say is, ah, 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 ah. Agent Hawk, I can assure you that Lin was watched very carefully by our techs and security people. We have software that logs every keystroke and records every download or upload. A software program that is impossible to hack and override? Well... So you can't be certain whether or not he stole information right from under your nose. Agent Hawk, we weren't the ones who got hacked. Your people were. We know what we're doing. I'm confident that he didn't attack our system right under our noses. And where is he? 
When was the last time you saw him? First of all, Agent, we isolated the Trojan that attacked NIH and Homeland. That's all he had access to. There was some deep code he needed to study, and given the approach of the Chinese New Year, he said that he would prefer working on the code of the Trojan back in Baltimore. And that didn't raise any red flags? We didn't see anything suspicious about that. Am I to assume that you are here because you think he's missing? No need to assume, Mr. Clemens. Professor Lin is missing, and it is under suspicious circumstances. Look, diplomatic relations with the communist Chinese is delicate enough without us reporting that their top computer specialist is missing. As far as we knew, he was working on the code for the Trojan that attacked the government last year. Now, as I understand it, there is a diplomatic dinner this evening at the Chinese embassy. Perhaps you can ask him where he's been if you see him. Did he tell you there was a reception? No, Agent Hawk, he didn't. We're in the secure data business. We know a lot of things. Except where the top black hatter in the world is after having access to your system. Will there be anything else, Agent? Have your best people go through the key log and security tapes. Let me know if anything suspicious turns up. Unless you want our people going through your files. That won't be necessary. We'll cooperate fully. I know Clements wasn't happy with me, but you can't lose track of one of the best black hatters in the world after he's had unprecedented access to your files. Maybe he's right. Maybe Professor Lin couldn't have accessed files not meant for his eye. But how can he be sure? In this soap opera world of the IDF, I couldn't help but think that maybe Lin was from the other side or even a rage mole. Whatever, or whoever he is, I have to find him. Do it soon. I decided to head back to my old stomping grounds and see if Hernandez and Mac have any new leads. I began to realize how much I was missing my old partner. I wondered what he was up to. Agent Barnes, mind if I join you? Ah, Ruth. Please, have a seat. Is that a cheeseburger I'm seeing, Jim? Yeah, I finally wore down Monster Chef over there and he added it to the menu. Gotta confess, though, I'm not really sure I'm eating beef, but, you know, it's close enough. So, uh, to what do I owe the honor of dining with the Chief Medical Officer of the Boulder Bar Rehab and Assimilation Center? How about your medical release? Seriously? Now, when have you known me to joke, Jim? Uh, when you told me that I'd be in good hands when you left me with that huge massage therapist. Well, he did have good hands, didn't he? Yeah, but uh, you neglected to tell me he had four of them. <laughs> well, you seem to do just fine. So, I'm good to go. Rachel tells me that you're well above your initial baseline. Reflexes are acceptable. Uh, for an old guy like me. For an active duty IDF, Agent Jim. You also demonstrated amazing motor skills and alpha wave control on those two missions with the drones. No better training than on-the-job training. Had a lot of good people helping me, uh, even Gleason. I know. I can't believe he's an IDF spy. Did you ever have any experiences with him? Like everyone who comes to Boulevard, he was medically screened. But personal contact? Well, actually, yes. What happened? We had a full house that day. I pitched in to help with running EKGs on our processing personnel. Well, with a menagerie of alien life forms in this joint, it has to be interesting. <laughs> Especially the ones with two hearts. Well, this Gleason character needed one, so I was applying the sensors. I had to lean over him to apply the sensors on the opposite side of his chest. Uh-oh. I, I think I get the picture. He claimed he moved his hand to scratch an itch. I bet he did. I mean, that's something I wouldn't even do on a first date. That just confirms my suspicions about him. You couldn't tell from the medical screening if he was a hungan, could you? No, but his behavior sure reeked of hungan. Yeah, Kate had a run-in with a couple of scullies. That's certainly the best place to meet one. I understand that they're doing an ancestral DNA test on him. Yeah, but unfortunately it's going to take a while to get a compilation from both planets. In the meantime, I'll be assisting Mr. Perkins in the investigation. Later this afternoon, we'll be giving his quarters a good going over. Fortunately, he billed it alone, so whatever we find will be his. Well, good hunting, Jim. And don't forget to stop by medical outprocessing to sign your clearance papers. Unless, of course, you want any additional massage therapy from four of the best hands in the business. I'll be there within the hour. Welcome back, Controller Pierman. 
We didn't expect to see you so soon. Commander, my business with the Council has been completed. I shall be returning to Alternate 310 to coordinate the threat assessment from Rage. Any indication yet on which 310 will be attacked? My gut instinct is that it is my Earth that is in his sights, since it is me that he is threatening. But Zokar is what my people call a loose cannon. Ah, an interesting analogy. He could go off in any direction. Any time. George. Controller 3, I am at your service. Have you been monitoring radio traffic from Rage? That would be a negative. The portal relay has been tampered with, and traffic is extremely delayed at best. I have been trying to access Latumus Penal Colony computers, but I cannot acquire any signal. I have deduced that they are all offline. That would make sense. Are you looking for a specific piece of information? I'm looking for the status of Prisoner 310. I only have archived information about Prisoner 310. It is a logical conclusion that Rage forces have liberated all prisoners. Given the protective custody status of 310, he is most likely to be an asset to Rage, rather than a threat. It is again a logical conclusion that he is now in their custody. Thank you, George. Please continue to scan for raged radio traffic or any movements. Affirmative. Sir, I've heard about 310 before. Why is he so important? His exact identity and skill sets are all classified, but I can tell you that he was a scientist ahead of his time. Was? He was living in a time when electricity on our two planets was in its infancy. He was nearing the end of his life. We saw a tremendous opportunity to use his skills and imagination, so he was time warped. Now, he is a scientist in his time, rather than ahead of it. Controller 3, so you have returned to us. Vlad, how is your supply of pierogies? Uh, good enough to celebrate your return, Comrade Controller. To what do we owe this honor of your return? I shall be returning to Planet 310 to coordinate our preparations for a possible attack. Don't you worry, Your Excellency. They have to get by us first. We are depending on your eyes and ears to protect us from any surprise attack. Not to worry. We have Robo 4. Georgia will be our eyes and ears. Vladimir, I must remind you that I do not have eyes or ears. This I know, Mr. Smart Depends, and yes, I know you don't wear pants. And I'm also glad that you do not have a mouth. Or a stomach. I have no need for sustenance, cosmonaut Vladimir. This is why I like you, Robofort. My pierogies are safe. Speaking of which, I do require sustenance. Not to worry. I am preparing them as we speak. Sir, I had no notification of your arrival. How long do you plan to stay with us? My stip was initialized this morning, Voldabar base time. I should be departing in about 20 orbital cycles. Very good, sir. We'll prepare the guest module for your stay. In the meantime... In the meantime, we will prepare a feast fit for a czar. Let's not get carried away, Vlad. So, you want me to be cowboy and bake some beans? I think not. We eat real food, no. Robo 4, timer check. Three minutes and fifteen seconds. Mark. Gentlemen, dinner will be served in five, if you will excuse me. Sir, I am somewhat concerned about your absence. Although we fall under the jurisdiction of the Council, any matters of a possible rage invasion should fall under your jurisdiction. The Council is aware of my absence and agreed to allow Vice Controller Rico to act on my behalf. You will take directives from her on any matters concerning Earth 310, A or B. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. Well, Commander, we had better make our way to the dining area soon, or we'll have an intergalactic incident on our hands right here. <laughs> Copy that, sir. Good afternoon, officer. Agent Hawk, Homeland Security. Thank you. Well, well, well. The Federales have arrived. Nice to see you too, Hernandez. Officer Mack? Detective... Ah, uh, I mean, Agent Hawk. Sorry, I'm still not used to that. That's all right, Officer Mack. Neither am I. So, anything new here? We've gone over this apartment with a fine-tooth comb. Professor Lin was a pretty frugal guy. Not much of anything here. But we did find one thing in the fridge. His fridge? Delivery from your favorite restaurant. Hold the chili dogs. And about the only trash we could find was a receipt from a restaurant. Have a look. Hmm. Not my favorite dish. This receipt is a couple of days old. It puts that delivery time in the window where we believe Lynn was taken. 
We contacted the restaurant, and that's where it gets interesting. Don't tell me they had no record of the delivery. Exactly, but they confirmed that the ticket is authentic. It came from their register. And the cashier code was even more interesting. It belongs to the waitress we interviewed. We got what info we could about her from the management, but it's not enough to raise any flags. And management says she didn't come in today, and they couldn't reach her. So I guess this is where you people come in. I'll get a thorough background on her. Might want to check with the restaurant and see if Lynn ordered out before. And how many different delivery drivers there were. Hey, you did some good work here. I'll make sure Captain McCall knows you guys just might have broken the case for us. That's decent of you, Hawk. Hey, I told you she was good people. Speaking of which, have you heard from Barnes? I thought he was going to open up some sort of PI agency or something. I talked with him a few days ago. He's still rehabbing from his gunshot wounds. I think he's still set on doing it. He's a tough old guy. I'm sure he'll do whatever he puts his mind to. <laughs> I can certainly attest to that. Have the crime scene techs cleared the scene? All clear. It's ours. I don't know a whole lot more we can do here. Well, I'm satisfied. As far as Homeland goes, the scene is all yours. Sounds good. We'll do one final sweep and then turn it back over to the landlord. What do you want us to do with his personal effects? Get them boxed for evidentiary storage. Hold them until we can determine his status. They'll either go to the embassy or back to China. Will do. I'm going to head back to D.C. and see if I can get into that embassy function this evening. I have a feeling that if I'm going to learn anything about Professor Lin, that'll be my best chance. Have fun. Don't eat too much raw fish. Spicy soup. It was obvious to me that our waitress was not who she seemed to be. And given her small stature, she had to have help. My hope was that the same delivery man brought Lynn his meals each time. I knew the investigation was in good hands with Hernandez and Mac, so I headed back to D.C. After my experience with Jeremy Parks, I fully expected to run into dead ends with a personnel search. What worried me was, if she turns out to be another Parks, I might be looking at a bigger problem. Who would want Lynn, someone in our world, or in the alternate Earth? Another possibility was one I didn't really want to think about. Could she possibly be a rage implant? And if so, what would they want with a computer hacker? I called O'Neill on our secure line to start the ball in motion. Okay, what do you have? We're going to need a complete background on a Wang Chun Wei. She's a waitress at Zhongshan. Hernandez and Mac discovered that Lynn had takeout delivered, but there wasn't any record of an order being filled, other than the receipt being issued. Her personal code was on the receipt, so she was the one who not only rang it up, but prepared the meal. So we may be looking for an accomplice. All right, I'll get that started. We'll not only run a background on her, but we'll also do all of the employees. If there's a red flag, I'll notify you right away. What's your famous gut telling you? My first question is, who would want a world-class black hat? The Russians have some of the best in the world, so I'm not thinking that they're involved. In fact, who here would need his skills badly enough to kidnap a visiting Chinese professor right from under the nose of the Chinese embassy? I agree. As far as I know, the same can be said for my side. Our Earth has about the same skills, though we're a little more advanced. Lin would be a good asset, but there are others more gifted. Then I'm guessing he has skills we're not aware of but someone else is. And I have a sinking feeling in this gut of mine. Rage? That's what I'm thinking. Is there any other incident that is similar to this? There is a highly classified incident involving someone from the early 20th century. All I know is that he was time warped to our time and placed in protective custody. Why? That's well above my pay grade. Rumor is that he's a scientist. He was taken to Latumus. So they kidnapped some poor guy and sent him into the future and put him in that filthy prison. Yes and no. He was sent to Latumus prison, but was put in a special holding area. He was made to be very comfortable from what I understand. Which means he's in the hands of rage. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the whole reason for them taking over the prison. So you think maybe Lynn was taken by them to join this mysterious scientist? It's all speculation and guesswork could be anywhere. I'll get this check started. Maybe it will lead us in the right direction. Sounds good. Hey, I've got a call coming in from Pierman. I'll see you in about an hour. Okay, sounds good. Pierman, what's up? 
Did you happen to catch the news just now? Now I've been working the Lin case. What's going on? A news break from the Ankara province of Turkey. Dad? A former American police officer who went missing five years ago has been found, claiming to have been imprisoned in a Turkish jail. And the Turkish government? As we suspected, Kate. They deny he was a prisoner, and we officially have no idea what he was doing in Turkey. Now you have a problem. What do I tell my family? Will Horace Hawk's cover story actually work? Who's the mysterious waitress, and was she working alone? And what will Barnes uncover about Gleason? Find out in the next episode of the Hawk Chronicles, Turkey and a Hawk. There are many things that we can all do that may help stop the spread of the coronavirus. But one thing we can all do is to have a plan in case you do get sick. First, consult with your health care provider for more information about monitoring your health for symptoms suggestive of COVID-19. Second, stay in touch with others by phone or email. You may need to ask for help from friends, family, neighbors, community health workers, or more if you become sick. And finally, determine who can care for you if your caregiver gets sick. For more information, go to cdc.gov and be well, everyone.